my name is Dharmananda. I'm one of the senior teachers from our school, the Somananda Tantra School. And I have been asked to give you a little bit of a presentation today about a very important topic, especially in modern time. The topic has been called in this live event, the Tantric Man. Is it a myth? Is it a legend? Or is it a reality? So let's try to explore this topic and try to understand a little bit better what is the concept of a tantric man and let's see how this thing can become practical for some of you especially the men who are watching this but it's also quite valuable for women because when we speak about masculinity uh, it is not only relevant for men but there's also masculinity for women actually if you study traditional spirituality and you study a little bit more of the higher aspects and what is actually the biggest accomplishment or the goal in the spiritual practice it is mentioned again and again that the highest achievement in the spiritual path is to reach self-realization or enlightenment and when we speak about the self we speak basically about the spiritual self we're not speaking about the ego or the mind we're speaking about the spirit and studying the nature of the spirit or meditating on the nature of the spirit the yogis along the years and not only yogis but christian saints buddhist practitioners and many others they have simply reached the conclusion that the nature of the spirit is not male and it is not female it is not masculine and it is not feminine the spirit is something which is above such polarities or dualities the spirit or as the indian yogis call it atman it is something which is much more abstract it's something which is above space and time it doesn't have any past or future beginning or an end and it's something which is actually indestructible we as human beings we think that actually many people think in such a way that we live our lives and at some point sooner or later you are going to die and that's basically the end of the road but according to the yogic understanding the spirit not your body and not your ego and not your emotions or desires or your properties or your family but the spirit will continue to live on after you die and this takes us to this uh law of reincarnation which has been presented in different traditions which says very clearly that whenever you die your soul your spirit goes through a very elaborated process of reincarnation that basically at some point your spirit is going to be reincarnated into another body and this process continues on and on and on until one day you will decide by your spiritual effort to step out of this uh, endless loop and reach self-realization in which you gain total freedom the freedom of your soul the freedom of your spirit reaching spiritual immortality now speaking and in, in the relationship to our topic here as i mentioned earlier when we speak about masculinity we can look at it in the following way if we take for granted the concept of reincarnation it means that some of you and I'm talking about the men right now which are watching me giving this presentation, some of you, perhaps, in your previous lives, you've been in a body of a woman. And in this life, you're a man. And on the contrary, some of you ladies which are now watching this video, perhaps in your previous lives, or even several of your previous lives, you've been a man. And the question is, wait a second, what does it mean to develop masculinity? Because if now I'm in a body of a men let's say and let's say okay i'm working and building up my masculinity on different levels but what will happen for example after i die and let's say in my next reincarnation i'm going to be born as a woman so why did i make all this effort well technically this uh concept will be true like this kind of uh, approach would be true from a certain point of view nevertheless from the tantric point of view because as you know this school the somananda tantra school is a tantric in its nature and when i'm speaking about tantra i'm speaking about energy i'm speaking about the um, ability of 
mastering and controlling your sexual energy, different forms of energies in your being. And according to the tantric understanding, we are not supposed to deny the world around us as it is presented in some other traditions like Buddhism and Vedanta, in which they kind of try to ignore the masculine feminine aspect. They're just trying to go all the way up and reaching to the top of the top without wasting too much time. But in the tantric philosophy, they say, wait a second, this universe is nothing else but the mirror of the creation of the creator. It is Shakti. It is energy. And thus they say, if you, for example, are in this life, you have been born in a body of a man, your goal should be to develop masculinity simply because this is the role that you assume in this life you have been given a body of a man and if you as a woman have been born in a body of a woman in this life then you should cultivate your femininity because this is the tool the instrument which has been given to you in this life in this universe and that is why in tantra because the ultimate goal in Tantra is the union of the male and the female, the plus and the minus to reach the ultimate. The goal is for men and women to develop their masculinity and their femininity. And as I said earlier, it doesn't mean that the woman, for example, cannot develop also her masculine aspect. You can find examples from recent uh, history of women which have become enlightened yoginis and they were actually quite masculine you can see for example a great yogini from india from the beginning of the 20th century by the name of ma nandamai ma nandamai even though that physically she looked very delicate and she was displaying some very beautiful gentle uh, feminine characteristics nevertheless internally from the standpoint of her attitude her spiritual approach she was very masculine and at some point even she, she was asked to perform a certain kind of samyama which means identification with shiva which is the ultimate masculine symbol in spirituality and she did her meditation and then suddenly when you look at her face and there is even a rare picture that maybe you can try to find in the internet there is a rare picture of man of mananda mai while she is in performing this identification with Shiva, that suddenly she looks very, very masculine. So I'm just saying this to uh, avoid any kind of confusion in which some people might fall into this trap and say, oh, you're just trying to tell that men should work on their masculine aspect and ignore their feminine aspect, and women should work only on their feminine aspect and ignore their masculine aspect. It's not true. It is important both for men and women to develop both of these aspects because both of them are needed in daily life and in the spiritual evolution now when we speak about the role of masculinity in daily life we know that in modern time this concept today is very misunderstood many people are confused by what masculinity actually means because a lot of people for example nowadays we look for example at hollywood movies or we look at the internet, or we look at all kinds of other environments in which we are exposed to so-called roles of masculinity, and we might get the wrong idea. For example, for some men or women, to be a masculine man means to be a bit like a Arnold Schwarzenegger, a little bit like a bodybuilder, that you just go every day to the gym and you're pushing weights and lifting weights and you're developing very strong, big muscles, and then after one year, when you have a really strong, beefy body, you can take off your shirt and walk in the city and all the women and some of the men will say, wow, what a masculine man it is. But this actually is just one aspect of masculinity. We can say it's a kind of a physical, superficial in a way type of masculinity because this man, despite the fact that he looks very impressive and he has big muscles and whatever, this man internally could be actually quite soft and quite flabby. Physically, he's strong, but what about his emotions? What about his mind? Can he, for example, control his emotions? Can he control his thoughts in his mind? Or is he internally 
the kind of person which lacks this kind of masculinity. If it's not the bodybuilder, then some people can be impressed, for example, by this kind of a macho man, the kind of a man which sometimes you see in Hollywood movies, you know, the type of man like Brett Pitt or George Clooney or Johnny Depp, which has very nice hair and is always dressed very nice with fancy clothes and whatever. His skin looks very nice. And some women and men will say, wow, such a man. What a man. But actually, again, this is only one type of masculinity. What happens internally? So that is why the yogis looked at it in the following way. To develop masculinity is an internal process. It's not just a physical or an external process that you just make yourself look very nice or you develop a lot of muscles or something like this. It's about what's happening here in your mind. It's a little bit of according to the yogis, developing this kind of attitude in which you have a little bit of this center, this laser-like kind of mentality or approach. And this is something which is very, very special. It is something which is very, very unique and rare in today's planet. Because today you walk around in your country or even you travel to other countries in the world, and you try to look around and find such a man. I'm not talking just about a man which has big muscles because this is something which you can find anywhere on the planet. I'm not talking about a man which just dressed very nicely or wear a nice cologne or something like this. I'm speaking about a man which has such strong control over his energies. This is the definition of a tantric man, that the man can control his internal Shakti is energies, he can control his emotions, he can control his mind, and he can also control his sexual energy. And we're going to talk about this in a minute. But this is the ideal tantric man. And this is, again, something very rare. A tantric man would be a gift not only for himself, but he will be a gift for the community around him. He will be a gift to his family, and he will be a gift to his lover, partner, wife, and to all his friends and relatives. Because a tantric man, because he can control himself, his energies, his emotions, it's he's bringing exactly this masculine aspect, which is lacking for everybody else around him. Because today, unfortunately, we are living in such a world in which people might have a certain type of masculinity. As I said before, it could be a superficial type of masculinity. But at the same time, you see that a lot of people nowadays, they are lacking exactly this aspect of control, control over their desires, control over their emotions, control over their sexual energy. A lot of people nowadays, for example, they develop different types of addictions. They are addicted to alcohol, they are addicted to drugs, to smoking, they are addic addicted even to all these uh, uh, this uh, tech instruments like smartphones and computers. A lot of people nowadays, they cannot live without touching and scrolling to, with their smartphones every five minutes. It's a kind of an addiction. A masculine man, for example, should have the possibility, should have the power to actually say, you know what, for one week, I'm going to take a period of time in which I'm not going to touch my smartphone. It's not easy. Right? Most people will say, come on, but it's so nice to go to your smartphone and see who send you messages and what's happening in the world. But it's actually nothing else but the voice of your monkey mind, which just wants entertainment. And it's not necessarily develop making your mind strong or masculine in a way. You are not able to control your thoughts. Because imagine if you could control your thoughts, you could isolate one thought out of the million thoughts which pop up daily in your mind. And you can say, you know what? The most important goal right now in my life is that I want to have perfect health. And if I just isolate this thought and I control it and I don't let my mind travel into one million different directions, then actually by focusing on this thought and repeating it again and again, I will develop perfect health. This is a form of masculinity at the level of the mind, which is very rare today on the planet. And I mentioned earlier, uh, masculinity, which is related to control over the sexual energy. And this is something which is super important in modern time. And this is something which we speak abundantly upon in our Tantra workshops, 
because this is something which is both relevant for men and women. If we say that the goal in sexual tantra is that for the male and the female, the men and the women, to reach a spiritual union, to go into enlightenment together, to reach spiritual ecstasy together, this is something which can only be accessible and possible if the men and the women learn how to control their sexual energy. And because this presentation is referring a bit more to men, cultivating masculinity, becoming a tantric man, then we say for men to become a tantric man, this is very important, you have to control your sexual energy 100%. If you cannot control your sexual energy, you are not a tantric man. Because tantra means energy. Tantri, tantra means shakti. How will you be a tantric man if you cannot control your sexual energy? We say the sexual energy is the most powerful energy in this universe. It's the energy of life. It is out of the sexual energy that you can bring life into this planet. So for a tantric man, the number one objective should always be to learn how to control the sexual energy. And I don't have the time right now to elaborate too much on this because some of you guys will be interested. Okay, how is it possible? How can we control our sexual energy? This is something which we teach in our workshops. We even touch it. Uh, we speak about it in the uh, workshop about masculinity, the Tantra Masculinity Vera training, which we are going to hold uh, in July in uh, our school. And... <clears throat> This is something which is a must for a man. If you read, for example, one of the most famous self-improvement books which have been written in the 20th century, it was written by a fellow called Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill, he took 25 years of his life to study the life of all the successful millionaires and billionaires in this world. And after 25 years of study, he published his book, which he called Think and Grow Rich. Some of you probably have read this book. It's a very famous one. And in this book, he mentions, he numbers something like 16 common characteristics that all the big millionaires and successful businessmen had, all had common characteristics which helped them to become millionaires. And one of these common characteristics, which is considered to be a secret, and it's something which you are not going to find in modern self-improvement books. They are not speaking about that. But Napoleon Hill, because he took 25 years of his life, he went a little bit deep into the secret societies in, in, in which some of these millionaires were involved. And he discovered one of the big secrets. And one of the big secrets was, is that, that these men, they have learned in the secret societies a very big secret, which is economizing your, your sexual energy, learning how to control your sexual energy, because the sexual energy is power. If you have the sexual energy under control, you are a little bit like, uh, you know, like this puppy in which you have so much energy that you don't know what to do with it. But of course, they uh, were teaching this guy how to harness this energy and how to invest it into money making, into business, into be have more power and to be more successful. This is, of course, from a spiritual point of view, a much more superficial goal because we can say what is the point of just gaining millions of dollars and having power and property if actually by the age of 80, if you are lucky to reach to the age of 80, you will have to give everything up because simply you are reaching to the last days of your life. Wouldn't it be more smarter to invest this power in reaching spiritual realization? Because if you reach the realization of yourself, of your spirit, this is something eternal. This is something which can gain, give you spiritual immortality. So <clears throat> this Napoleon Hill was aware of it. It's considered to be a big secret. And that is why for a tantric man, it is crucial. It is very, very important to control the sexual energy. Today in modern time, you can go to all kind of uh, new age circles or spiritual circles in which they speak on tantra and they speak about this and that, and they don't mention anything about controlling the sexual energy. They don't mention anything about this secret. And this is where you can find today, you don't find a lot of authentic tantric men. You find today a lot of men which might present themselves as tantric men 
for whatever reason, but actually if you spend a few hours with them or a few days, you see that actually internally they are soft, they are lacking some very uh, important element, and maybe one of the reasons for that would be simply because they do not control their sexual energy. So this is a secret, this is something which is very important and we emphasize on it on every, each and every one of our courses. So. Again, what is masculinity for men? It's developing a little bit more of this laser, this center, this focus, that whatever is going to happen around me, because this world, this Shakti, can sometimes be a little bit like a storm, right? When you are in the middle of a storm, it's not very pleasant. There is a very strong wind blowing, there is rain, there is all kind of other tests, and sometimes we can have a storm which is not necessarily physical, but it can be a little bit like a different kind of storm in, in which, for example, suddenly uh, you are having all kind of quar quarrels with your partner or your family is giving you trouble or something bad is happening in your country or you are facing some kind of emotional turmoil or even some physical uh, condition of some sort which is not so much pleasant. And the question is, how are you be able to confront this challenge, this storm? Are you simply going to be carried away and in this way you are going to become emotional, act in a silly way or do some action which you are going to regret later on? Or will you have the ability to be like a laser, to be like a center, like a rock in the middle of the storm and control your emotions and control your desires and control your mind and your thoughts? This is something which is very rare today on this planet. This is considered to be something which if you develop and if you cultivate, it will actually make you in a way a superman. We can look today at all these silly movies in which they present superheroes, Iron Man, and I don't know what all these kind of things, which are actually nothing else but Hollywood with some special computer special effects. They make these people fly in the air in the background of green screens or whatever. But we know it's all silly and it's not realistic. But actually, if you look a little bit deeper and you try to understand how can a man indeed become a superman or a tantric man, it's all about an internal attitude. It's all about how can you tame your mind? How can you discipline your mind? Not only building big muscles and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is something which is only temporal and it's not going to last long. But if on the and maybe even if you are an Arnold Schwarzenegger, sometimes you are falling into this trap of making all kinds of silly things in your life, as uh, some of these actors frequently do. So it's a bit more about this attitude from the level of the mind. And this is something which we are trying to teach in our workshops. And to be more specific, in July, as I've mentioned before, to be more specific, from the 12th to the 14th of July, we are going to hold a three days workshop, which is called Tantra Masculinity Vera Training. It's a workshop only for men. So sorry for the ladies, you are not invited. So only for the men, it's going to be a workshop for three days. It's going to be held in Stuttgart in Germany, in which in this workshop, we are going even to teach some very specific techniques for men. Some of these techniques are considered to be quite secret. And these techniques, they can be quite powerful and they can help you learn how to develop different types of masculinity, not just one type of masculinity, because in Tantra we say a man and women as well, but a man should thrive to develop all different types of masculinity, masculine, I'm sorry, physical, energetical, emotional, mental, and even spiritual. So we are going to teach you such techniques. We are going to go through all the different types of masculinity. We are even going to speak a little bit how a man can learn to control his sexual energy by practicing different techniques. You are going to receive some material and then you will have the tools, not just some theoretical information like I'm presenting here in this live event, but you're going to have the tools in which you, each and every one of you men, which will choose to join this course, will be able to practice every day and slowly, slowly you can become a tantric man. You would be able to control your sexual energy, which can make you a multi-orgasmic man. And that means that you can be the man that can make love for not just a few minutes, but for hours and hours. 
and it's not only valuable for you but it's also going to be valuable for your partner and so you can develop this type of masculinity you can develop other forms of masculinity and we are going to go through all of this in this course so of course there is much more to be said about this uh, uh, topic the tantric man but let's go right now to questions let's see if you have any questions regarding this topic which i've just mentioned and we would be able to talk a little bit about some of the things which i've mentioned so i'm looking here in my phone and see some of the questions so so far there is only one question the question comes from deva how can i transform myself to be more spiritual it's a very good question at the same time it's also a very general question how can you transform yourself to be more spiritual uh, i would say the first uh, step is that you need to have the desire it means you need to have the motivation because some people nowadays they just you know look at some videos of some guru or some teacher or even looking at some live event as you have been watching in the last 30 minutes or so and that's why they will say there is a hmm it sounds very nice uh, i would really like you know to do a little bit of spiritual practice or do something like this but they never really have the right kind of passion the right kind of motivation because you need to have passion for this and if you say to yourself oh i would like to do a little bit of spiritual practice but at the same time i'm not willing to give up my whatever four hours of watching telenovelas on the tv or something like this when a person comes with this kind of attitude obviously the dream of becoming or transforming to be spiritual will always remain a dream so that is why first of all you need to have a certain kind of desire and that's the first step and after that the the best thing sh that should be would be to find the right kind of teacher as i said earlier today unfortunately we are living in such an age in which you can find in your local city a hundred different yoga schools or spiritual schools which actually teach spirituality in a superficial way or they will teach a kind of a yoga which is more like gymnastics which can be definitely productive because it can make you more healthy it can make you more fit but it's not necessarily going to develop more your spiritual aspect so that is why the next step should be to find the right kind of teacher how will you know if you find the right kind of teacher it's simply a matter of uh, looking in the right direction and trying to see what is the content of the teachings is is teachings are indeed aiming to the highest achievement which is self-realization they are not just meddling with all kind of superficial things that if you will do yoga your muscles would look more nice or this and that but the teacher is speaking that the highest goal should be reaching self-realization and then the next step would be is putting some time and effort into this practice and you don't necessarily have to start from doing eight hours of yoga or meditation per day you can start even by doing one hour two or three times per week if you are the kind of person which has a job as some of you i'm sure do uh, watching this video or you have two jobs or you have other obligations then obviously you don't have more than half an hour one hour per day or per week to invest into your yoga practice but even if you start with that it's already a good springboard because from that your motivation and your passion will increase because once you join such teachings and you get this kind of fuel for your soul because you hear stories about this yogi and this saying that they have reached high states of consciousness this is something which fills you up with motivations and that will be increasing your motivation even more and then you will find yourself doing more practice and you will be doing more yoga courses and from that point you can just go upper and higher and this i would say are the necessary steps for uh, generating this so-called spiritual transformation so remember it has to start first first of all from a desire you need to have the desire you need to put a little bit action into it and then the results will come pretty soon let's continue with the questions here uh, question the next question is coming from sarah so hello sarah so, uh, so she's asking women who would like to develop and harness their inner masculine 
do, do they have the same practices as men in the VIRA training, for example, or is it a different set of skills and practices? And also vice versa, do men who would like to develop their inner feminine, do they use same techniques uh, and, and women? I would say to a certain extent, yes, to, to a certain extent, some of these techniques are similar for men and women, which means if we are speaking about cultivating masculinity, some of these exercises that we teach men would be also fitting for women. However, there will be certain exercises, and this is something which is especially related to the exercises which relates to tantric sexuality, which will be different for men and women simply because of the structure, the anatomical structure of the men and the women, which is different. It is also relevant a little bit to the energy in general, which is different between men and women. So in this way, it might be a little bit different. But for many of the exercises, like for example, if I speak about asanas, yoga postures, these are quite similar both for men and for women for developing their masculinity. And as well to the, regarding to the second part of your question, it will be also <clears throat> in the same way valid for men. Like if a man want to develop his femininity, then many of the exercises that women do will be also valid for uh, men. <clears throat> in case any one of you want to have a little bit of a taste of it. In some of our, our, our yoga courses, like in some of our Hatha Yoga classes, we are teaching some of these body postures, some of these asanas, and we don't have two separate groups, one group for men, one group for women. We are doing it both for men and women, and we are working equally on the feminine aspect, and we are working equally on the masculine aspect, because we say that in general, it would be beneficial for men and women to develop both the male and the female equally. But <clears throat> it is true as well that in modern time, because of different factors, because of the food that we eat, it means the wrong kind of diet, because of a modern lifestyle, which is a bit more soft and flabby, that today, uh, most men and women, they tend to be too feminine, too uh, uh, yin, as we say, energetically. And that is why our advice usually for men and women is to develop a bit more their masculine aspect until they will reach the necessary amount of balance. Let's go to the next question, which is coming. I hope that I pronounce your name correctly, uh, Theo Karis. So Theo Karis is asking, I didn't manage to be here from the beginning, but can you please define sexual energy? Do you mean the desire to have sex, to control our emotions, of having or not having sex? Uh, it's a good question, especially if you haven't heard about this uh, concept before. And I didn't mention specifically in the beginning of the presentation what is sexual energy, because this is something which we usually leave for our uh, tantric sexuality workshops. But to make things a bit more clear, let's put it in this way. The yoga, the yoga teachers from Tantra, they put it very clearly, they say the sexual energy is not something metaphorical. The sexual energy, according to them, is something which is very concrete, and they define it very clearly. They say the sexual energy for men, it is manifested in the form of the sperm or the semen, which means, in other words, every time that the man discharges himself or ejaculates, he loses some of his sexual energy. And the sexual energy for women, will be manifested in different ways. It's usually manifested under the two different forms, where the first one would be when a woman, for example, have explosive orgasms. Then the fluid which comes out during this explosive orgasms is the sexual energy which they lose. And the second uh, form in which women lose their sexual energy is when a woman have her menstruation. Whenever a woman loses the menstrual blood, she is losing some of her sexual energy energy. Uh, I cannot elaborate more than this here simply because this is just a presentation about what does it mean to be a tantric man and if I'm going to go further from what I've started right now speaking about sexual energy it will simply produce a very long talk and this is not the purpose of this talk right now. Next question is coming from Michael. Do you have any book recommendations about mac masculinity? except for the way of the superior men. Uh, I would uh, advise to you, 
to look at the books of George Oshava. George Oshava was the founder of macrobiotics. I don't know if you, any uh, of some or all of you have heard about macrobiotics, but macrobiotics has been developed in the mid 20th century by a Japanese man called George Oshava, which was actually a very masculine man. And George Oshava <clears throat> has written some brilliant books about uh, masculinity, but again, not in a superficial way, just developing very, you know, impressive bodies or putting nice cologne or something like this. But he was speaking a bit more from a form of energy, like how can you regulate or balance your diet? How can you change your food habits so that you can cultivate more masculine energy? Look at the books of George Oshava. He wrote several of them, and you're going to find some valuable information about masculinity. Next question coming from Olivier. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Why are, these, why are these techniques for men secret? These techniques for men are secret, like as I told you about, uh, if we speak about secret societies, for example, the secret uh, societies, uh, and this where we uh, might slide a little bit to conspiracy theories, is coming from the fact that, unfortunately, on this planet, because on this planet there are certain group of people which are defined more as the elite, they would like to have power. That They will say, you know what, we have tons and tons of people on this planet, men and women, the masses, and the masses, uh, you know, they have their desires, they have their instincts, they have their needs, and we, what gives us satisfaction is the ability to control these masses, and because of this, they would not like to share this information with everybody else, because imagine if everybody else will know how to control their sexual energy, then they will also know how to make money and how to be this successful with this and that. So these people from the elite, they don't want that. And that is why they will say, wait, we cannot share it with everybody else. We are, we are just going to share it with a you know, prestigious, a very small kind of circle in which if you pay enough money, because in these environments, uh, money talks, so if you have enough money, then we are going to share with you the secrets and then you become one of the, you know, uh, exclusive ones. You are becoming one of the VIP ones, which you can uh, use this for gaining that or this power. Uh, in our uh, teachings, uh, we say these techniques, they are not necessarily secret in the way that we don't want you to know about this and only us, the teachers, we will have this and we will use it for our benefit. We teach it in these courses, as I said, in these courses which we are going to, which is going to be held in July, we are going to teach uh, some or most of these techniques and they are not secret anymore because if you have them and if you can practice them, then it's just a matter of putting your energy into it and then you're going to get all the effects and benefits related to practicing these techniques. <clears throat> Let's see, there's three more questions and then I think after that we're going to stop. Next question is coming from Matthew. He says, Dear Dharmananda, would you be able to expand on the Vera course in July, especially the group practices, please? Thank you. Uh, so I've mentioned a little bit before about this course, but what I can say is the following. This is a three days course, and that means these are going to be very intense three days. We start in the morning early and we are finishing in the evening, which means there's going to be just a short one hour and a half break in the middle for lunch. So uh, in this three days course, I'm going to present the different aspects of masculinity coming from the tantric tradition corresponding to the structure of the chakras. I don't know how many of you are familiar with our courses in which we uh, explore the concept of the chakras and their correspondence to your emotions, states of minds, and so forth. But uh, in this course, we are going, I'm going to teach you different techniques, yoga postures, asanas, breathing exercises, pranayama, different types of meditations, different type of exercises related to the control over your mind, in which you will learn how to cultivate different aspects of masculinity. And usually in this course, many men notice that while it's very easy for them to access and perceive one type of masculinity, like they can react very well to this physical type of masculinity because of their structure. Then when it comes to other types of masculinities, it's more like their weak part. And then, for example, they notice that if I 
do these specific techniques, I will develop a certain type of masculinity which will help me control my mind. And this is exactly what was missing so far in my life, that all my life, all the problems that I had in my relationships, all the problems that I had in my life general, in my work and whatever, were related to the fact that I was lacking this masculinity that I can control my mind, that I can control my thoughts. So by learning such exercises, as we teach in this workshop, you can develop any type of masculinity. You can develop all types of masculinity if you have the time, because it requires some effort, it requires some practice. Or you can choose, you can say, you know what, for me right now, the most important thing is to develop the masculinity of why not the heart. I would like to learn how to be more forgiving, to be more compassionate, that I will not immediately, as soon as somebody step on my toes, will have this outburst of anger or violence. I will be able to control my anger and my lower instincts and say, you know what, I forgive you. This is an attitude which is coming more from a masculinity on the heart. So this will be a very three uh, intense days. A lot of techniques, that means there is some theory as well, but actually this is a course which is much more practical. You are, get, you are going to learn about many techniques, practice them, and in the end of it, you're going to see we'll have a very rich program of different techniques that you can practice in your free time. Next question is coming from Christine Christiana. Uh, it says, is it possible for a man to become multi-orgasmic even if he does not have more than 30 minutes of ejaculation control practice per week. Let me read it again. I'm not sure I understood. Is it possible for a man to become multi orgasmic even if it does not have more than 30 minutes of ejaculation control practice per week? Uh, it is possible. It will be a little bit more challenging because if a man has only 30 minutes of uh, free time to do such practice, it's uh, something which is usually uh, this amount of time might not be enough for most men because it takes a little bit more than 30 minutes per week. But it depends very much on the quality of these 30 minutes. That means if the man during this 30 minutes, he is putting all, all his mind and all his intensity in trying to do the best that he can to his ability to try to learn this process, then it might come. It depends very much on the approach of the man. It depends also on other factors, like for example, what kind of diet is he holding? Is it the kind of person which is a smoker, drinking alcohol? Because all these things, they can bring impurities to the system, which means they can bring more obstacles to success in such a type of practice. But at the same time, if during these 30 minutes you are doing very strong techniques for learning how to control the sexual energy, and you do it regularly indeed, like 30 minutes per week, then I would say that for some men, not all of them, but for some men, the success might be reachable, but it might take time. That means 30 minutes uh, per week, uh, you're not going to get success most likely in one month, but you might get success in six months if indeed you are persistent and you are doing it uh, day, every week for 30 minutes. And the last question here, which comes from... Yana, does a more masculine man influence a woman to be more feminine? And can a woman, by, bring, by being more feminine, influence a man to be more masculine? Uh, I would say that it would be actually vice versa. That means it's a matter of resonance here. And that means that when a man is more masculine, he usually generate a certain aura or a certain energy around him which is more masculine and that is why usually a woman in the presence of a man actually spontaneously naturally she will be somehow affected by this field of energy which is actually very good for a woman because if like, the tendency of the woman is to be a bit too feminine too sensitive lacking control of their emotions and other aspects then by being in the presence of the man, she will get a little bit more of this masculine energy, which will be very beneficial for her. And the same thing for men. Some men, they can be very masculine, but at the same time, they can be very quite dry. That means they become insensitive, too insensitive. And that means that they might be lacking compassion, that they might be lacking some other beautiful aspects regarding to the feminine aspect. 
And that is why when they are in the company of a woman, which is more feminine, then they will be, by the principle of resonance, they will get some of this energy, which will cool them down a little bit, which will balance them. And that will be exactly what they are uh, missing. It can happen, nevertheless, that at some, uh, 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 at some uh, uh, situations or scenarios, a man which is very masculine, obviously because he has so much masculinity, he will be kind of attracting towards him women which tend to be more feminine, simply because it's the law of polarity that plus attracts minus and vice versa. And I see that there is one more question here, which is coming from Yavor. I wonder, are desires and passion generated by Svadhisthana, Manipura, or Anahata Chakra energies? So this is a question about three chakras. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the teaching of the chakras. Uh, so I'm just going to answer it uh, briefly and uh, to the point. And if any one of you wants to know more about the chakras, you can ask in our future live events or you can do a little bit of research. So he asks here, I wonder our desires and passions are generated by Svadhisthana, Manipura, or Anahata Chakra energies. I would say that most desires are generated actually from Svadhisthana Chakra. We say that Svadhisthana Chakra, which is the second chakra in our system corresponding to the sexual organs, the Svadhisthana Chakra is the number one chakra in the human being, which corresponds to the instincts, to the desires and the emotions of the human being. So, for example, the desire or the instinct to eat is coming from Svadhisthana Chakra most of the time. The desire or the need to have sex is coming from Svadhisthana Chakra and many others. So, among the three chakras which you've mentioned here, it would be mostly from Svadhisthana Chakra. If, however, we speak more about a desire or passion to have power, to control other people, uh, to gain a lot of money, this is something which is associated more with Manipura Chakra, with the third chakra corresponding to fire. And this is something which you can find very often in uh, politics, in business world, in which men and women in these environments, they are indeed having a bit more Manipura chakra predominance and they have more of this desire. They don't have so much desire to have sex or desire to go to some, you know, fancy restaurants to eat some very delicious food, but they definitely have the desire to gain more power, to have more money, to be the president, to be the boss. And this is something which is typical on Manipura chakra. So this is the last question. And we are coming close to the end of our presentation. So uh, thank you all for joining this live event. I hope that it was uh, useful for you and see you soon in future events. Bye-bye.